Beacons are an important part of late game Minecraft, giving you amazing status effects and this awesome beam going up into the sky. However, the nether star needed to craft one is quite difficult to get because it is protected by the wither boss. But no worries, because this is the ultimate Minecraft 1.18 beacon guide. Let's check it out. To get a beacon, we need a nether star. To get a nether star, we need a wither. And of course, to get a wither, we need wither skeletons. Now, wither skeletons, which drop their skulls, are found in the nether. Mon not just any part of the nether, they're found at a nether fortress. The problem is, they only drop their skulls as a 2.5% chance, and you need 3 skulls to make a wither, which means that you'd be fighting approximately 120 of these before you get enough skulls to make the wither, which is of course a little bit too difficult. There's two things, however, you can do to fix this. The first one is with looting 3. So every level of looting on a sword increases the chance of head drop by about 1% chance, meaning with looting 3, the chance for a skull is 5.5% instead of 2.5%, making it so you have to kill less than 20 of these to get one of their skulls. As in most places, these don't even generate that commonly within the nether fortresses. And that is to find yourself a nether fortress in the Soul Sand Valley. And because the Soul Sand Valley can't spawn mobs like piglins and zombified piglins, the amount of hostile mobs that can be in this biome is still the same though, we get this effect where all the hostile mobs spawn right here inside the fortress. And so what you basically have is you have a place where you have tons and tons and tons of the wither skeletons, the blaze, and the other mobs. In fact, Nether Fortress in the Soul Sand Valley has so many mobs oftentimes you won't even know what to do with them. Now, of course, you do sometimes get some zombified piglins from different biomes that could be intersecting, but overall, the vast majority of mobs you find in here would be things like wither skeletons. And because of that, with a good set of armor, a looting three sword, and this many wither skeletons, you can find yourself up to 15 skulls every single hour that you're killing in here. So that could be a really good option as well. You have to try and find a nether fortress in the Soul Sand Valley. Also, if you are having trouble getting the skulls from these guys, one thing you could do if you have to is if you have a charged creeper, which is a creeper that's been struck by lightning, and they do explode next to these and kill them, it does make them drop their skulls. But of course, that's kind of a last ditch effort, as charged creepers are a very difficult thing to get. While you're in the nether, the only other thing you really need to collect is some soul soil and some soul sand. It can actually be either of these, you just need four of one or the other or even a mix. So maybe let's say two soul soil and two soul sand or just all of one or the other. It doesn't really matter, just four of either type. Now there are two main methods of fighting the wither and you can spawn in the wither once you have four soul sand and three wither skeleton skulls. I would suggest having good armor. It doesn't have to be netherite, maybe enchanted diamond or at least very good iron armor would be definitely important. You want to have a bow with hopefully power 5 and some arrows, or at very least a netherite axe with smite 5. These are definitely the best weapons to fight it with. You don't need perfect weapons, but definitely something high damage like this is very useful. You want to have a high saturation food like let's say golden carrots, maybe suspicious stew, or even just some pork chops. Also a potion of regeneration and a potion of strength 2 are incredibly useful for making the wither fight as fast as possible. Now the two methods, we're going to start off with the underground method. To do this, all you have to do is let's say go down to your strip mine, you probably already have, and just go down one of the tunnels like this, and once you're at the end of it, and of course I will show this off in survival, all you have to do is get your four soul sand and your three wither skeleton skulls, place them in a pattern just like this, and then with your three wither skeleton skulls, put them just like this on top. That will summon in the wither. As it kind of charges up there, you want to kind of go a little bit further back like this. Not too far, but maybe something like that is good. And it looks like it's kind of an explode. It is going to. You'll have a little bit of damage here. There it goes. Now all we have to do is go up to it and either hit it or shoot it. The bow is just if you kind of prefer that. What's nice about this method is that the wither is basically trapped down here. And so all you have to do is just hit it just like this, very, very simply, as it slowly breaks its way towards you, just like this. Now eventually, once it's half killed, you cannot use the bow anymore. You'll notice it kind of had that effect around. If we try again, you'll see it kind of has that effect. That means that it's at the next stage and you cannot hit it with the bow. So simply hit it with your axe. If it has smite five, you can see it's incredibly easy to kill this thing. Just like this, I didn't even use the potions. We could maybe use a potion of strength right now, why not? 
then we can just hit it with the netherite axe here and this is in hard mode let's go like that and there is our wither fight very easily done and we even have our nether star right there which is how we craft the beacon the added benefit of doing it down here although it is a little bit dark is that you can also find diamonds down here just from the explosion radius that it gives you and it doesn't really matter how much it explodes down here as deep slate is very blast resistant and also if anything else it's really just helping you to mine and of course with a method like that all you have to do is dig a new tunnel spawn in another one and fight it again if you want to get yourself multiple beacons but of course the difficult part is getting larger amounts of wither skeleton skulls. Well, I wouldn't say it's too difficult if you do have a looting three sword and a soul sand valley nether fortress. Now the second method is doing this in the end. Now to do this method in the end you need five obsidian and you need to have defeated the ender dragon. First make sure that you're facing west. We can do this in java edition with f3 on. If you're in bedrock edition bring a sunflower with you. Sunflower's face always is east and all you have to do is go the opposite direction of that west so just make sure you're facing west when you dig this down. Then dig down in here a little bit lower all the way down here so you're kind of in this lower bit of the end portal right here. Then dig this out till you find the edge of it. So you kind of see that edge there isn't the bedrock, it is just the end stone. So we're going to dig all of this out till we get to that edge, so just over here and over there as well. And we just have this small little room under here with this easy staircase to get out, just like that. Once we're under here, we have our five pieces of obsidian, making sure it's just one block from the edge right here. We're going to place them just like this in sort of a T shape, just like that, underneath the bedrock here. And now that we have that, we can summon in the wither. And this is actually very, very simple to do. In fact, this is probably almost cheating in a sense of how easy it is, but it does work in both Bedrock and Java. And again, make sure this is facing west and that this is the exact right position where this is right here one block away from the entrance. And you can kind of tell that, so let's say if you put a block there, you could see it's one block away from that or the very middle of this T shape here is in the very middle of the structure there. So that's important. Now place the soul sand down just like this on top of it so this back block is empty. Then place the three wither skeleton skulls here that will summon in the wither. We're just going to stand back here so we're not killed by the explosion. That's why it's important to have a good exit there. And basically when it summons in, it's going to summon in just a second here. There it is, there's the first explosion. It is stuck in the bedrock there and it's just going to suffocate itself. In fact, you can even see it slowly dying already. Something you could technically do if you wanted is just summon in more and more withers. But all we have to do to kill it is just be under here and hit it like this. A word of caution though, make sure not to have a knockback weapon because you could actually knock it back out of the obsidian which would be a disaster. A free wither roaming around in the end is horrendous so make sure if you do this you do it correctly and there it is dead very very easily. So that's the other main method of killing the wither and of course if you did want a challenge you could spawn it out in the overworld but I wouldn't really suggest that. Something that is also interesting about withers is that they do kill basically any mob they see and if they do kill a mob they'll drop a wither rose. This cool item will actually give you the wither effect if you're on top of it so if you're spawning in your first wither or maybe spawning in some different withers for different plans it could be really cool to bring some mobs around to maybe your underground cave or maybe put some buckets of tropical fish down there or something and let them drop these with the roses you can also turn these into black dye if you want but anyway now that we have our nether star how do we actually craft the beacon the beacon is crafted with a nether star five glass like this and three obsidian like that so really the only part of this that's super difficult to get is the nether star so that gives you the beacon you can just place that down and well it doesn't really work it's not going to turn on or anything it just isn't really going to work also interesting to note you can break this with your fist so how you get it to work is you have to put it on top of blocks, but not just any blocks. You have to put it on iron blocks, gold blocks, diamond blocks, emerald blocks, or even netherite blocks, one of the types. There's five different types of beacon bases just like this with varying effects. Also you can mix and match it just like this, putting different materials in here. It will turn off temporarily of course when it's not full with the correct powers. If we put it in like this you can see we have all those different things mixed in there and it does work right. So really if you want you could have a mix of different materials here and still have your beacon work well. Now the real question is how on earth do you get this many blocks to make your beacon? For instance, this one needs two stacks and 36 blocks to build this entire thing up. So what I generally recommend is to do iron, gold, or emerald. Now of course with emeralds, if you have a large villager set up, you could get those emerald blocks somewhat easily. With iron, you could make an iron farm, and with gold, you could make a gold farm. A netherite beacon is almost completely impractical in any real sense, although I've certainly seen people make some as a challenge. 
And a diamond one is also something that's rather difficult to do, but it does look quite cool. There is actually no practical difference between using any of these blocks for your beacon, or a mix of them, it's just whatever you prefer, and realistically whichever one of these three blocks you have the best access to. And the shape is basically a 9x9 nine nine on the bottom, so it's basically 9 blocks down here. So for instance that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, just like that. It would be 9 this direction as well, so there's 6, 7, 8, 9, and just around like this. The lowest level of the beacon is almost always the most difficult to make. Once you fill that in, you can go 1 in and go like this with 7, so that will be a layer like this, just one higher up like that, to kind of make this pyramid beacon base, just like that. After you've done the layer with 7, you again go one more in and have a layer with 5, just like that around here. And after that, you do a layer of 3 by 3 and on top of that you can place the beacon and that will give you a fully powered beacon. Now how do these pyramid sizes affect the powers? Because of course this would be much harder to make than let's say something like this. Well this is the smallest you can make and of course every other layer after that makes it more powerful. So with one layer like this the effect range is only a 20 block radius from this and also the effect duration is only 11 seconds and of course I'll show you how to turn this on in a second here. With two levels the effect range is 30 blocks and the effect duration is 13 seconds. With three levels the effect range is 40 blocks and the effect duration is 15 seconds. And with the largest one here the effect range is 50 blocks and the effect duration is 17 seconds. Now if you want your beacon beam to be colored all you have to do is place down a block of glass or even a glass pane and that will instantly color the beacon beam like that. Something that's actually really cool about this is you can even stack different colors by putting different ones of these on top of each other, something like this. And that will actually use some complicated math to combine the colors here to give you a unique RGB color. So you could actually mix and match different colors here to give you a truly unique color for your beacon beam. It's actually interesting because this beacon beam does not go infinitely into the air. It actually only goes 1048 blocks into the sky. So if we actually keep going up here, you can see the end of it, which is kind of a funny sight. We'll keep going all the way up here. You may think this beam is infinite, but no, once we're at a thousand blocks tall. In fact, you can actually see the beam is starting to get a little bit closer there. We're going to keep flying over here and you'll notice, although it looks like the color eventually goes away, it doesn't. We'll keep going up here and we're almost up to 1000 blocks. You can see here we're getting near to the top of the beam. Once we get all the way up here you can see there is the top of the beam. And it's funny because up here since we're not really supposed to be seeing it, it doesn't really render in correctly and it's quite a funny sight overall. But it is kind of cool to see the very end of this. And this is 1048 blocks from above the beacon beam. And of course we can fall down here again but it is interesting to see the top of that. And I am still falling. Here we are on the ground. Now how do you actually power on the beacon? Well there's these five different materials that we can have the beacon be made out of. Those are the same materials that we can power it on with. Let's say we want to waste a material and use a netherite ingot to power it on with. Ideally you'd want to use a iron ingot, maybe an emerald or a gold ingot. But you can use any of the varieties of these. So for instance we could use a single diamond to power this on. We could use a gold ingot to power this on. Or we could use an iron ingot or something like that as well. So what we do is we go up to our beacon that we want to have powered on. Now it is on, but it doesn't have an effect selected. We'll place in the item. You can actually see here it shows you which ones you can use. And we can select a primary and a secondary power if we have all four layers of the beacon. So that's the big reason why you want to have your fully powered beacon, is you can only have a primary power with the first three levels, like it shows here. With four levels, you can have the secondary power as well. So you we can select any one of these effects here, and we can select a secondary effect. So that could either be regeneration as well, or it could be the second level of that. So for instance, strength and regeneration, or strength and strength two. However, something you can do if you want is you can go strength, then let's press strength, then let's press jump boost, and then we'll press OK. It will actually see as we get both strength and jump boost. It doesn't really visually show you that well. You can have two of these primary effects. You don't actually have to pick two secondary effects. You can totally have two primary effects. But let's say on this beacon here we try powering it on. It does not allow us to pick that secondary effect. And let's say we try to do two effects here. It'll just pick the last one that we did. It's kind of hard to show there since I picked jump boost for both. Let's try a resistance like that. We try doing resistance then haste. It will just give us haste. It won't give us resistance as well. But with the four levels here you can pick two primaries or a primary and a secondary. Now ideally most people would use something like let's say haste 2. The reason why is with haste 2 you can literally instantly mine almost every single block in the game provided you have the best pickaxe. Unfortunately though some things like deep slate you cannot instantly mine which makes clearing out certain areas a little bit more difficult. 
Also, contrary to what you might think, you can actually have beacons in the nether and the end. Let's try it right here. We'll put down a simple beacon. Now, of course, it won't turn on first of all, but we can look straight up and we can simply punch a hole in the netherrack like this and get all the way to the top here. We do not even have to break any bedrock. Once we get up to the bedrock, which will be quite soon here like this, it should turn on. The reason why is that the beacon beam can actually go right through bedrock and you can see here that our beacon is now on we have whatever effect that we want turned on right here which is super cool now it's awesome about this as well as let's say you want to do a lot of mining in the nether you can just bring a beacon to the nether as well or maybe even you can select a different effect to give yourself one of those also it is interesting too and you can kind of see this that the beacon does have light level 15 that's emanated off of it if you place it down just like that you can see the lights coming off of it just like that but if you can use it in the nether and also in the overworld you can also use it in the end very easily all you have to do is place down some blocks like this just as you would in the overworld place down your beacon of any size you want and that will power on as well giving you whatever effect you want so for instance you could haste mine some of these blocks although i don't think you can actually insta mine them you can mine them quite quickly here and you can do whatever effect you want of these now, i'm also going to quickly right now go over what these effects actually do so speed and speed 2 would give you the same effect as if you'd consumed a speed potion resistance makes you resistant to attack damage and resistance 2 is of course even better than that haste and haste 2 make it so that you mine fast and faster jump boost 1 and 2 are like drinking a jump boost potion so they make you jump even further and strength and strength to make you have a higher attack damage with of course regeneration being like the regeneration potion which makes you regenerate your hearts over time regardless of your hunger that's interesting because the beacon is the only way to get the haste effect and it's the only way to get only the resistance effect you can get the resistance effect through potion of the turtle master but with just resistance no slowness the beacon is the only way anyway i hope you enjoyed that video about how to get beacons and use them in minecraft if you did make sure to press the like button make sure to subscribe comment share feel free to join me on the official icraft mc discord server reddit and maybe even follow me on twitter i'll see you in the next video and have a great day goodbye